Widely used IMU sensors MPU6050 and MPU9250 are outdated, so they're not recommended in new designs. So if you're using them, it is time to switch to a new version of these uh, IMU sensors, ICM2094-8. Uh, uh, this sensor provides accelerometer gyroscope and magnetometer readings. It has a uh, low power capabilities and in addition, uh, it has a um, dig digital motion processor inside. What it means is it computes the quaternions um, inside of the chip so you can estimate the attitude of an object without doing any computations. So I'm going to uh, make a series of videos explaining all aspects uh, of this IMU sensor, but this uh, video specifically is about reading a gyroscope and accelerometer readings through SPI interface. To configure the SPI interface, I use um, Cubimix file. So to enable SPI1, I just choose full duplex master mode. I have all configurations uh, by default, except the prescaler. So I set the prescaler to have the baud rate less than uh, seven megabits per second which is recommended by the data sheet. Also, I change it clock polarity and the clock phase configurations in a, in a following way. Also, we need additional GPU output pin for a chip select line. At a functional level, this uh, sensor is very similar to old versions. Uh, however, there's a one major difference, which is uh, the registers are clustered, are separated into banks. So we have these registers that belong to bank zero. Then we have bank one registers, bank two and bank three registers. So when either reading or writing to the specific register, we have to specify the bank as well. Uh, to do that, we have a separate register inside of the sensor uh, register bank select. And we have these bits of this register uh, to, uh, to select uh, the, the bank. So let me show how to select bank zero by writing to this register. Uh, for that, I have this piece of code. So I reset chip select line to activate the, the IMU sensor. Then we have this register address, 0x7f as, as a hex number. And then I, I, I'm going to send just zero to specify to select bank zero. So I transmit the register address and the data. So this data will be written to this register. Then I set the chip select line to deactivate the image sensor. Next, I'm going to show how to read a particular register. Uh, to be specific, we're going to read uh, who am I register. So it has this address, address zero, and it belongs to uh, bank zero. For that, I have this piece of code. So I, again, I reset chip select line and I have um, register uh, zero, but we have to set the most significant bit indicating read operation. So we have this SPI interface description inside of the data sheet. So when reading the address, the most significant bit indicates a read or write operation. Um, so then I transmit the register, then I receive the data. And using the printf function, I uh, print the received data. So I have a separate video explaining so I have a separate video explaining how to set up printf uh, under a serial wire viewer. So let me debug the code and see the result. So I open uh, ITM data console. Also, don't forget to connect the pins of the microcontroller to corresponding pins of the IMU sensor. And the, regarding the hardware I'm using, you can um, check the description. So I resume the code and we can see that we received this byte. 
And if we check uh, the data sheet, EA, we have exactly the same value what we received. So it means that our code worked. Next, I'm going to show how to read gyroscope and the accelerometer readings of the sensor. Based on these observations, I created a library to read the gyroscope and the accelerometer readings. And we can update this library as we progress to add new functionalities. So inside of the header file, I have the macros to define registers. Uh, also, we have enumerations for range values and for, for selecting the bank. And uh, we have additional macros to, uh, to initialize the library. So we have SPI, um, chip select port and pin number, gyroscope and accelerometer range values. And also we have the struct to, to store data. So inside of the source file, we have a function to select the user bank. So we send the bank select register and the, and the bank that we choose. Also, we have separate functions for writing and reading a, a register. So first we select the user bank, then we transmit a register and data when writing to the specific register. So this data will be written to this register. And for reading, we have a similar approach, but when uh, sending the address, we have to set the most significant bit. And I have uh, static functions for activating and deactivating the new sensor. And the most important uh, f function in this library, I think, is, is, is a function to initialize the, the IMU sensor. So when initializing, first it is, I think, important to reset the IMU sensor. For that, we have this uh, register power management. So we can set this bit of this register to reset the IMU sensor. Also, we set this bit to keep in sleep mode. And also I set one to these bits uh, to, to select the best available clock source. And that's why I end up with this value. Then I, I just wait uh, just to make sure that the IMU sensor is ready for communication. Then I work with the power management uh, register. Then I work again with the same register to exit from sleep mode. To do that, we have to reset this bit to exit from sleep mode. And then I work with this register for data alignment. What it means that all, um, all sensors will be uh, sampled synchronously at the, at the same time. Then um, I start configuring the gyroscope. So first I um, set uh, the sampling rate divided to zero. So we, we have a maximum uh, sampling rate. Then I use this register to select the gyroscope um, uh, range and I enable digital low pass filter by setting this value, this bit. That's why I have this um, value to be written. Then I do the same configuration for the accelerometer, setting the sampling rate and choosing the accelerometer range value and enabling digital low pass filter. Then I have to work with user control register. So I reset this uh, bit to put the serial interface uh, in SPI mode. And we need to be careful um, not to update other bits. So first I read this register, then I set um, the, the corresponding bit to select uh, SPI mode only, then I rewrite this register. Then I select user bank zero because uh, the registers that hold data belong to bank zero. And we have a separate 
function to read the acceleration and the gyroscope values. So first we send the address of the onset register. So first we need to set, send the address of this register. And when sending, we need to set the most significant bit indicating read operation. Then we receive 12 bytes. Why 12 bytes? Because we have these 12 registers that hold acceleration and the gyroscope readings. And what we receive is just bytes, high byte and low byte for all sensors. So we need to encapsulate uh, corresponding bytes to extract the, the true actual value of the sensors. That's what I do here. Then I print the, the values using printf function. And inside of the main function, um, I include the, the header file. Then I um, initialize uh, the, the sensor. Then we have this uh, variable to hold the data. Then within the while loop, I just call this uh, function to, to read data every one second. So let's see how this code works. So I'm going to debug again. So again, I open a data console and I resume the code. And we have these values. And if I do some movements of the sensor, we can see how the values are changing. So it means that the, the code is working. Next, we're going to add more functionalities. So don't forget to subscribe to not to miss new videos.